I think is very, very risky, very dangerous, very risky strategy. I understand the impulse, uh, but I think we're living in a moment where we can't afford to take that kind of risk. This is Howard Wolfson, former New York City deputy mayor and democratic strategist. And the risky strategy he's concerned about is a recent tactic used by Democrats where they throw tens of millions of dollars toward attacking far-right Republicans who were not initially on the radar. Dan Cox, too close to Trump, too conservative for Maryland. DGA Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. By doing that, the Democrats hope to boost GOP extremists now so they don't have to face more competitive moderates in the fall. This is a strategy that has already backfired, but we'll get to that later. I'm Eugene Daniels, and this is what you need to know about the midterm elections. I think what makes this moment unique is that we are in a democratic crisis, small d democratic. Uh, you have a situation where there are people running for office who basically don't believe in the rule of law and don't believe in democracy, and potentially elevating them into positions of power I think is very, very risky. The tactic was used in Colorado, but Dems plan to push the far right candidate failed. They did it in Illinois and Maryland. Sometimes it's worked, others it hasn't. But critics argue that Democrats are playing with fire when they try to choose their own competition this way. We're not gonna wait around for primaries to happen. We're starting general elections early and believe that's important for our success in November. Marshall Cohen, the political director at the Democratic Governors Association, has done this before, but he's not ready to admit all the risks that come along with this tactic now. Democrats have, you know, propped themselves up as kind of the party that's able to protect democracy ac across the country. And so what do you say to critics who say they look at what you're doing, you know, you, you know, talk about, you know, wanting to start the general election early, but they are worried that you choose this anti-democratic, I'm going to not certify the 2024 election if unless a, a Republican wins candidate over someone that maybe you just disagree on policy. Like that, there's, it's a risky bet, no? I think the risk is electing any Republican to the governor's office in 2022. If you look at the fields of candidates, every single one of them has embraced the big lie, pushed falsehoods about the 2020 election, pledge to ban abortion. I mean, you go down the list, there's not that moderate Republican ideal that a lot in the uh, press and folks think about. But there is a difference in the Republican Party between a candidate who holds conservative views on abortion and gun rights and a candidate who is pushing the big lie and is anti-democratic. Let's look at Maryland. Dems threw millions at Trump endorsed Dan Cox. He attended the January 6th rally turned riot, tweeted that Mike Pence is a traitor, and pushed the conspiracy theory about Trump winning the 2020 election. His opponent, Kelly Schultz, is pissed because her campaign feels that she is the type of Republican that Maryland needs. They're only doing that for one reason. They're doing it because they know that I am the only candidate that can beat a tax and spend liberal in November. So is this the game that Democrats should be playing? I say the crisis is not one individual candidate. It's the entire Republican field of candidates. They are uniform in their extremism. To me, that's the danger. But why, but, but why not let it play out? If we know who the opponent is going to be before the primary, we're not... Who do you think the not... opponent's going to be before the primary? And a lot of times... In Colorado, you guys were wrong. And they were. Dems lost every race in Colorado they meddled in. Zach Roday, campaign manager for Joe O'Day, says the moderate Republican was inadvertently boosted by Dems attacking his far-right competition. The reason our campaign was aware this could happen is the past but also because we are up against a candidate that had very limited resources, was talking about one or two issues that were not on the top of minds of the broad swath of the electorate. And the reason, too, is, is it saves money. And so the idea probably being we could spend millions now versus tens of millions later. So we thought that this was the right scenario for this meddling. Take me in the room behind the scenes when you guys first started seeing and hearing this. What was, what was your reaction? We're, we're still fascinated to find out all the different uh, players and financing that went into this. It was highly synchronized. And typically when you get outspent, I think at the end of the day, this will be about five to one because they spent millions of dollars saying that Joe was moderate. I mean, they literally lifted Joe's credentials amongst the center of the electorate. Aside from possibly losing elections, Wolfson says this strategy is more dangerous in 2022 than it has been before. 
this is certainly not the first time that uh, Democrats have attempted to meddle in Republican primaries or vice versa. I understand the impulse. I understand that in a normal year, you'd want to run against the, the best possible opponent from your perspective. But in a year where I think the winds are very much coming at the Democratic Party, um, putting people into, uh, into positions where they may actually get elected and have control over uh, the election system in this country, people who don't believe in democracy, is a very, very risky strategy, very dangerous.